Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Wang Bo. I'm from uh, EasySec, uh, which is a leading uh, cloud computing uh, solution provider in China. Uh, today, I will share some uh, experience uh, in our product development uh, based on uh, Magnum and Kubernetes. Uh, as we know, uh, there are three uh, container orchestration engines in Magnum, uh, Mesos, Swarm, uh, Kubernetes. We choose Kubernetes, so uh, all the content in this slide uh, focus on Kubernetes. Uh, this is our agenda. Firstly, I will give a brief introduction about Magnum, and secondly, I will uh, talk about some features of a production-ready container platform. Uh, it includes uh, the CI CD tools, the private uh, image registry, uh, service discovery, and uh, monitor and alert uh, log collection and uh, search. Uh, last, uh, I will uh, share some details uh, how to uh, integrate the features into Magnum, uh, such as uh, the process of the cluster initialization and how to map the Keystone user to the harbor. So this is a Magnum in Metaka release. Uh, we can see that uh, use Magnum, we can uh, create bay model, create bay, and the Magnum conductor will call the heat. Heat will call uh, the, uh, the different um, open stack uh, components such as NOAA, Neutron to provision different resource. Then we have a bay. Uh, on the top of bay, we can create a, a pod a service and a replication controllers. Uh, in the Newton release, uh, the Magnum has uh, ha had removed the container operations, and the Magnum is act as an a container infrastructure management service. So what's the functions Magnum provide now? Uh, it's really a limit, uh, just uh, some operations, uh, create, delete, update uh, for the cluster template, cluster, and cluster certificate and quota. That's really uh, not enough to meet uh, uh, customer's requirements. Uh, the continuous integration, continuous deployment, it's a very common use case of what the customer wants. Uh, the developers uh, make a code change and push the commit into a GitHub. Uh, it, it will trigger a Jax job to build a new image, and uh, Jenkins could deploy the image into the test zone and push the image into a uh, image registry. After a test, uh, operators could uh, use the new image uh, to deploy it into the production zone and to complete the uh, ap uh, application's launch. So we need the CI CD tools. Uh, CI CD tools could help to uh, reduce disk and deliver reliable software in short uh, at, uh, at relations. In short, uh, CICD could help uh, build faster, test more, and fail less. And CICD has become uh, one of the most common use cases of Docker adopters. Uh, we, we choose uh, Jenkins uh, as a CICD tools because it uh, has lots of uh, plugins and provide rich features. Uh, such as it could generate a pod slave to run a job uh, dynamically and uh, destroy, the, destroy the pod when the job uh, uh, complete. And you, you, you don't only, uh, you can create a pipeline, uh, but not just a single job. And it could uh, uh, commit, uh, uh, trigger the commit, uh, uh, a new commit could trigger a new job uh, dynamically, uh, and you can uh, define some uh, timed task. Uh, the primates uh, image registry. 
uh, our product uh, is to help customer to build a, a private cloud. So some things we need to care about. Firstly, is uh, security. Uh, customer has the confidential code and other data. They, they want uh, private. They want pri private uh, registry, and uh, sometimes network issues. Uh, generally, uh, the private network will be faster than the public, and uh, in China there is a great firewall, so users cannot pull the images from public Docker Hub. So, in some cases, the internal private cloud, uh, uh, there is even no access to the internet. So we, we choose the Harbor as our uh, private uh, registry. It uh, provides uh, uh, the functions as following. Uh, you could uh, uh, create a private and a public projects with Harbor, and uh, the images belong to a different projects are uh, uh, isolated between uh, different uh, uh, projects. And uh, you need to log in and to do the authentication uh, before you can get and pull images. Uh, next, we'll talk about the uh, service discovery. Uh, service discovery is uh, about uh, DNS. Uh, that means uh, you, you can access the service uh, from the service name or the service URL. Uh, you don't have to uh, access service uh, with the class IP. Here is an example. So ser service A want to uh, uh, need to access service B. So without DNS, you, you must do the following in, in order. So firstly, create a service B and get the class IP of service B, and uh, create service A with the class IP as a parameter. So in some reasons, a service B restart uh, destroyed, so class IP will be changed. S service A will fail to access B with the, with the, orange, with the orange class IP. So why we need a DNS? Because the class IP is complex and unstable. Uh, service name is uh, permanent uh, com comparatively. Uh, the class IP is uh, associated dynamically when we create a service. It will change when the service restarts. Uh, there are two scenarios. Uh, we, we, we need to access service uh, internal uh, from inter uh, inside the cluster or outside. So we need uh, internal DNS and uh, external. For the internal, uh, if you have a, a we, we use a Kubernetes as our internal DNS. Uh, with the Kubernetes, uh, the, the service A uh, only need to the, know the name of service B. And, uh, he can get the class IP of the service B and uh, internal the node, the, serv the service uh, with the class IP, uh, it, will be, it will redirect to the endpoint of the service B uh, from uh, the uh, DNet rules uh, in IP tables. Okay, the, the DNS pod ha holds three containers, uh, Kubernetes, uh, DNS mask and healthy. The Kubernetes process watch the Kubernetes master for changes in service and endpoints and maintains in memory lookup structures to service DNS requests. The DNS mask container adds the DNS caching to improve the performance. And the health container provides the health checks for the DNS mask and Kubernetes. Uh, with the DNS pod, uh, DNS pod is exposed as a, a Kubernetes service with a static IP. So uh, when a new container creates, the Kubernetes will pass the DNS configuration for, uh, as a flag for each container. Uh, this is a, uh, external access. 
Uh, here is an example about how to access a Kubernetes service. Uh, the service is a load balancer type. Uh, firstly, you need to know the, the VIP and the port uh, of the cloud load balancer. Then it will uh, load balance into one of the nodes. Uh, internal one node, uh, the node IP and port will redirect uh, to the class IP and the port. Then the class IP uh, then redirect, redirect to the pod IP and the port. It will be do, uh, do two, uh, twice a uh, DNS uh, all through the IP tables. Uh, we, we use uh, ingress and the ingress controller as our external DNS. The ingress is a, is a Kubernetes resource which gave a service which gave a service URL to, uh, to the service. Uh, in the picture, there is an example. We have a service, uh, WordPress. Uh, the first line is the class IP of the, of the service. The following two lines are the two ports IP. Uh, on the right side, uh, here is a ingress resource definition in, in YAML. The important part is the rules in the spec. Here you can see the, uh, the, the host name, the path, and the service in the back end. So here is uh, the mapping between a from, from service URL to the service. Also, we, we need an ingress controller. The ingress controller is a, a reverse proxy. It uh, could forward the service URL request to the endpoint. Uh, it works as following. Uh, watch, watch the Kubernetes API for any ingress change and update the configuration of the controller and reload the configuration. In short, uh, ingress controller could detect the ingress resource change and fetch all the endpoints of the service. Uh, this is a configuration of the ingress controller. Uh, in this example, we use the uh, NGIX as a backend. Uh, on the left side, uh, there are two parts in the picture. The first part on the top of the picture is uh, there is a service name. It, it maps the service name to the endpoints, means uh, to the port IP and port. The second part is uh, on the uh, bottom of the picture, it's a service URL, or what we define in a resource, uh, in a ingress resource. So with the ingress controller, ingress, uh, the access process is uh, uh, first go to the service URL and uh, the request uh, to the uh, ingress controller. Ingress controller uh, load balance to uh, the endpoints. So why we need the uh, ingress? Because uh, ingress is uh, do the better job than the load balancer. Uh, ingress uh, do, does not uh, occupy the pods on node. Uh, because uh, uh, the service type, uh, the, the, the load balancer service type, it will occupy uh, the node pods on every node. Another reason is uh, the ingress uh, supports the TOS, TRS access to the service. So this is a uh, access service with uh, ingress. Uh, you, you need to know the service URL and the port, and uh, it will uh, come into the ingress controller. And the uh, ingress controller uh, reads the configuration and uh, load balance to the, the, the endpoint to a specific port.
next we talk about something about uh, the monitor and the alert. Uh, we use uh, Prometheus uh, to do that. Uh, and the alert manager and alert A uh, are the plugins of the Prometheus. So on each node, we run the uh, seal the weather and uh, node exporter. The seal the weather is uh, integrated into the Kubernetes, and the node exporter uh, is running as a daemon site. The seal the weather uh, collects the containers running infra, and the node exporter collects the nodes uh, running infra. Then Prometheus pull the metrics from each node and push the, uh, you, you, can define, you, you, you can define the alerts uh, by the Prometheus and the Prometheus will uh, push the alerts info to the alert manager and the alert manager will push the alert data to alert A. Uh, here are some metrics uh, we can uh, we use in our products: uh, the node node infer and the container infer. Uh, it's very common: uh, node CPU usage, memory usage, file system usage, and the network I/O rates. Uh, same uh, same metrics for the container. And next is uh, log, log collection and uh, search. Uh, we use uh, FluentD and uh, Elasticsearch and Kubana. Uh, the FluentD uh, is running uh, as a daemon set on each node. Uh, it's responsible to collect uh, uh, the container logs and uh, the data will store in uh, Elasticsearch and the user can uh, search any logs uh, they, are, uh, they, they want and the Kibana uh, to display the log info. Okay, uh, this is a cluster uh, architecture. Uh, the, the rectangle in different color means, uh, the blue one means uh, the VM, the uh, orange one means uh, uh, the pod, uh, Kubernetes pod, and the arrows in different color means different network. Uh, in our product, we share one uh, share one harbor, the one uh, private uh, Docker image registry uh, between among the among, among different clusters because uh, different uh, some some uh, the Kubernetes components such as the Kubernetes API server, the scheduler manager uh, are all running. Uh, as the Kubernetes pod. So we, we need uh, list images, and uh, list images are, are the same for different clusters. So we share one, uh, we share one uh, registry to store this uh, uh, same, uh, to store this common images. Uh, on, on the slave nodes of the cluster, uh, there are the features we, I just uh, mentioned, uh, the Kubernetes, the ingress controller, the Prometheus, uh, EFK, and the Jenkins. The Jenkins uh, master will uh, generate a slave to run a job. And the master communicate with the slave used uh, by the private network. Uh, the masters, uh, the masters need to uh, call the harbor to uh, to get the images, uh, and the Jenkins Jenkins slave uh, also need to uh, pull the pull the new uh, pull the new image into the harbor. Uh, this calls uh, uh, are using the public network. This is some, some uh, this is uh, the initialization process. 
uh, VCR1 uh, hardware uh, among different uh, clusters. And uh, we use heat to create a, a NOAA instance and uh, do some config uh, to run the hardware. That means uh, the hardware is running uh, on a VM. And for each cluster, uh, Jenkins, run, run, Jenkins runs as a service. Jenkins live, uh, run, uh, runs as a pod dynamically. And uh, the Cooper DNS and uh, the Prometheus and the uh, EFK. Uh, node porter, the node exporter of the Prometheus uh, runs as a daemon site on each node. And the front D also runs uh, as daemon site. And others run as a Kubernetes service. Uh, here is uh, some tricks. Some tricks about uh, how to map the Kisun user to harbor. Um, we uh, we create we create uh, uh, one harbor user and one harbor project for uh, for one Kisun project. So the users uh, of one the users from one Kisun project, they could see the same image. They could see the same projects. So one user from dashboard or the command line to uh, call the Magnum, uh, we, we add the logical process uh, of, uh, of the hardware image into the Magnum. So one user uh, call the Magnum to get or push image. Magnum will judge if the user, uh, if uh, it, we have created uh, the, the Harbor user or the Harbor project for the Keystone user. Um, we map, uh, we use uh, the Keystone, uh, we use the Keystone project ID from the user info to, to, ju to judge if, uh, to map the uh, Harbor user and the project. So if, if uh, there is no uh, user and project in Harbor for this user, we will create one. And uh, after that, user could uh, get images and uh, push image with the Kisun user info. Okay, that, that's all. Thank you. Uh, any questions? Sure. Okay. Oh, you can. And on the, um, on the stuff you did, adding Prometheus and Fluent D. Yeah. Um, is this something you, because we did the same for Prometheus and we pushed it upstream in Magnum for Kubernetes in Atomic. Uh, is this something you pushed uh, for Fluent D also, or are you planning to? Uh, we have do the job uh, in our, uh, uh, privately, we didn't push the, the YAML files uh, into the upstream. Okay. okay. Is this something you would be willing to do? Or? Uh, maybe we will. Maybe okay. we will. Okay, cool.